Welcome back to the Expert Speaker Podcast. We have renowned hypnotist, one of the world's best stage performers, the Transform Coach, Wayne Lee. Welcome to the Expert Speaker Podcast, Wayne. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Majid. Wayne and I, we go way back from the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers. On more than one occasion, you took me under your wing and gave me words of guidance. And then I finally got to see you perform your show in front of an audience full of professional speakers, no pressure. <laughs> and um, you are a master stage hypnotist. Thank Wayne. you very much. Yeah, Wayne and Lee. I just had a, a, an image, a thought, a picture of you being on my stage. Oh, yeah. I, um, I remember all of it. You know, I got hypnotized. And uh, I mean, look, Wayne, I'm a performer. You put me on stage. I'm going to have fun. Like, that was fun. Yeah. I relaxed. And I think we pretended like we were in a band. And then we were pretending like we were falling asleep. You would come by me and you would like tap my shoulder and go sleep. And then I would comply. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to mess up your show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, how'd you get into hypnotism? And how'd you get into that stage performance? Well, you know, I was a school teacher way back in the day, and I had actually had seen a hypnosis show in a nightclub back in Edmonton here. It was the most mind blowing thing I'd ever seen. It was fascinating. It was funny. Um, and I was in disbelief. People are doing all these pretty weird, crazy things. If you ever seen a hypnosis show, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, I was just in awe. I was there with my girlfriend at the time and watching this thinking, is this real? And it wasn't until the hypnotist gave a suggestion where he had everybody on stage think that they had lost their belly buttons that I started to believe that there was <laughs> to this stuff. Yeah. As, you, as you could imagine, people are looking for their belly buttons. We're laughing. And then he said, someone in the audience has your belly buttons. All the people on stage went off stage looking for their belly buttons under people's clothes. I thought it was hilarious. And um, I was laughing my head off, but I looked at my girlfriend, turned and looked at her. She, she wasn't laughing. And there she was looking for her belly button. Oh, yeah. So she got hypnotized in the audience, which for me, it was like, you know, this was real because she came with me and it was, it was fascinating. So that was my introduction to hypnosis and the obsession that took over in regards to, I have to learn what this is all about. I was fascinated with the power of the mind. I'd been involved in the sport of amateur wrestling. So I did a lot of visualization, got a lot of guided imagery. And this was like the next step. This was like opening up the door to mind magic, which uh, that's how I got into it. And then I read every book I could, watched the videos. It was back in the 90s. So there was really no internet. <laughs> so, you know, I tell kids now that when I talk to the students, I said, I went to a place called the library and I would dive in and I would lose myself in trance like six to eight hours just reading everything I could. And it became a it became an obsession for me. Cue the musical montage with the algebra equations going across the screen and Wayne emerges from the library, a hypnotist. Huzzah. <laughs> well, it took more than that. Um, one of the things that it took was me actually going out and doing it. So I, I looked at it like, OK, um, I'm going to just test this out. So I would be at like the social events, like a wedding. And I would say to somebody, Hey, do you want to get hypnotized? And they were like, like, I could just see the look, like you must be nuts. But I just, I guess had that courage to go out and test it out and um, realizing that it worked. And actually I was working at a group home while this was all taking place. And the first people I ever hypnotized were three kids. And I told my manager, I said, can I do some relaxation techniques with the kids? And this was an adolescent group home where some of these kids had behavioral challenges and that. So it was a perfect thing to do some relaxation techniques, but those relaxation techniques were hypnosis. And I'll never forget the one kid, um, he did a rendition of Michael Jackson. And to this day, I think it was the best one I'd ever seen. So I was like, this works. Wow. Uh, but, but then after doing it in a private scale, I did a first big show at a nightclub in, in Edmonton here. And that was the turning point for me. I had so much fun and I just felt like this, this passion and this excitement that after it was like, that's what I want to do. And so I, I transitioned out of teaching and I became a full-time hypnotist on the road, doing the road show, and also had such a fascination with motivation, empowerment, personal development that I blended them. And so my mission has always been to entertain, educate, and empower. And that's guided me through 
my journey. You love your acronyms. You love to play with words. Do you know how words are spelled, Wayne? Or do you know how words are made? They're made. They're spelled. Spelled. Yes, yes it is spelled. I have one. I have an acronym for the word word. W-O-R-D. Tell me it. Yeah. It's a, it's a gooder. It's a gooder. Um, and I think the reason I create these acronyms is because I pretty much failed English in mm. school. Mm. And it was my own understanding what are these words mean and and you know they, they started to come to me but word is it's 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 a way of replacing doubt and it's also a way of reinforcing doubt so people are using words and as a hypnotist what i found out is the basis of hypnosis is that it's not magical or mystical in terms of some unknown thing it's the power of suggestion to reach your subconscious and change your behavior or your performance hmm you know, now that I'm thinking of it, you must be one of the most uh, proficient users of the magic of words that I know. <laughs> to command the mind to sleep, to dance like Michael Jackson, to relax. To let um, go, to tap into the subconscious. Well, I think part of it, Majid, is that I'm a you know, a, a teacher and I'm a student. I'm continually learning every day, uh, researching other models, other modalities, how to make myself better in regards to communicating and influence. So that's a never, never ending thing. If you had to offer one hot tip where we can change one word or change the way we say something and significantly impact the quality of our life, what comes to mind for you? Getting rid of the word can't from your vocabulary when it comes to your goals. Uh, can't either means one of two things. It is that you don't know how to do something yet, or you really don't want to do it. And so can't, if you remove that, it creates alignment now. It creates a sense of that there's always a way. So a good little phrase to get in the habit of saying is that there's always a way. And people have conditioned themselves. They've learned the word through past programming to then pop up and it's it's what their reaction is even the word can't i have a have a acronym for can't what is it choosing a negative trance whoa okay so wayne what do you say instead of can't there's always a way there's always a way yeah choosing a negative trance yeah cool love it um wayne i'm putting together a little course called magic words oh love it and it's like one of my favorites is I never say I have to. I always say I choose to where I get to. Mm -hmm. And what's so profound about just little simple changes like that is your words represent your beliefs and becoming more conscious of the words that you use is an act of practicing mindfulness. And to change the words actually changes the beliefs because I feel so much better when I say I get to. Yeah. And it's just changing a word. And the biggest guidance system that we have or the greatest guidance that we have is how we feel because of the words we say. So that, you know, people that are more on the metaphysical plane or law of attraction, they know that when they feel a certain way, they're sending out a vibe to yeah. the universe. And it's yeah. always letting you know, not only how you're feeling, yet it's, it's sending out that magnetic vibration and you're going to get a match in a result, whether it's you're going to attract the, the person, place, event, opportunity, or a great idea that okay. you come back in. But also on more of a practical standpoint, when you feel better, you perform better. So wouldn't it make sense to use words that get you to feel good into a powerful yeah. state? And, and that's it. I have one more to share with you. Tell me. Because this one tool is, is out of the 21-day challenge that I do right now, which that's my mainstay of teaching people and introducing to my teachings it's called the, the reminder tool. So this is, this is a good one. I'm excited about it because people have said this is one of the things that's been the most powerful for them. So the word mind, M-I-N-D, this is the acronym. Most people are swimming in their own self-limiting beliefs or their doubts, and they're arguing for their limitations. They're like, I can't do this, and I'll prove it to you. I'll show you. It's like, okay, well, you think change is going to happen if you have those thoughts? No. So me, I now decide. So think of the word mind, M-I-N-D, me, I now decide there's always a way. Me, I now decide to think a thought that feels better. Me, I now decide 
to say some words that are going to be in alignment with what I want. I decide to think a thought that feels better. Yeah, me, I now decide because it's ownership, like what you just said, I choose. Everything's a choice, but most of the choices that people are making are subconscious or unconscious because they're conditioned beliefs. And people don't even realize that making a decision is actually forming a new belief but most people don't make new decisions. They actually just repeat the old patterns over and over and over based on these old limiting beliefs that they've learned from their parents or programmers that are authority yeah. figures. Yeah. Let me ask you an application here. We're in the pandemic. There's uh, new levels of uncertainty and stress and fear and the future may sound, feel scary to people. Yeah. What is something you would do to put yourself in a trance when you're finding yourself worrying about the future? Uh, so if I hear the, the question correctly, Majit, is in terms of how do I get myself out of the negative trance into a better trance? Correct, correct. For people who are feeling uh, the stress and fears of the pandemic, what would you recommend for them? So first of all, the pandemic is just a circumstance. The stress mm -hmm. and the fear is created out of their thinking or their perception. Okay. So that's the first thing is gaining awareness of that the pandemic in and of itself isn't inherently good or bad. Now, I do know that people have obviously have died and there's things that are happening and we, we know that. Yet the people that are then creating the stress and fear, they're the ones filtering that to create that in their own life. So that's first, first and foremost is knowing that the, the fear and the stress and overwhelm that they're feeling is coming from their thoughts and then understanding, hmm, what's those thoughts? And questions that we ask ourselves are one of the quickest ways that we can get ourselves into a better state. So I say that they're possibility questions instead of problem questions. Okay. So one question is, you know, what's next? What's next that can be an opportunity? what's next that can be good? What can I focus on that can create some value for others? So most people are just asking themselves really poor questions that create this stress and overwhelm, which again, there's a guidance of our feelings. So getting yourself to ask a better question, a possibility question that then opens up the door for more. What's next? Yeah. How can I serve? How can I serve? How can I produce value? You know, me, I now decide, hmm, what's a great question to ask? You know, One of my favorites is how does it get any better than this? Which is awesome. Like what it's a great relation of gratitude. How does it get any better than this? It's yeah. a inquiry into a positive improvement. Yeah. Cool. I love these little uh, applications of words in the mind, Wayne. Thank you very much. So I've known you, it must be a decade now. Yeah, it's going to be at least that. We've been doing the, the speaking circuit and then the pandemic hits. Yes. And I see you crushing the coaching business and putting out content and creating courses and you got the 21 day challenge. So I'd love to know more about the 21 day challenge or the 21 day program you have. And I also like to know what was your experience in pivoting from what I assume was probably a full calendar of live shows to uh, an empty calendar and a bunch of uncertainty. How'd that well, go? Yeah, I'll tell you all about it. It's, 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 a, it's a quite the story in the sense of, um, I look back and it's about a year that everything kind of shut down or it, it changed. And so I, what I teach people now is I, I teach people and I wanna just give this context to it is that I call it the mental end game activation method is that everybody needs to have a mental end game. And one of the things, I think I've, I've lived by for years is as always making my future vision bigger than my past. So okay. that principle in and of itself at a subconscious level has served me really well. Cause one of the things that I did uh, before getting involved in hypnosis is that I was involved in the sport of amateur wrestling. And so my goal, and I was obsessed with the sport was to make it to the Olympics. I had a very serious neck injury, did not make it to the Olympics. I was really disappointed actually to the point of like depressed that I couldn't do that. But I always had that, like what's next, making my future vision bigger, my past. Didn't know exactly what it was, but I just knew that there was something out there, got involved in the hypnosis. So the hypnosis was my mental end game was to make 
make it to Vegas to have my own show in Vegas. Cool. And I had somebody that offered me a contract to go to Vegas. We were all set, ready to sign the deal, went to Vegas, checked out the place I was going to be doing my show, it was all taken care of. It was a dream come true within seven years of me doing hypnosis. And then the week before moving and doing all this, 9-11. Aha. Uh -huh. So I was crushed. I was devastated. And it was like, what's next? And that led me to uh, going into the corporate market and becoming a peak performance expert, still doing the, the hypnosis entertainment plus the keynote presentations. And so one of my goals was to see, be seen more than just an entertainer, but have this perception and this real uh, results of being a peak performance expert using the subconscious mind. And so invest lots of money getting to the point of where had all of these materials, like the website, my demo reel, everything was just, you know, hiring people that were really good at producing all these things for us. And last year we got to the point of in February doing the best month ever in closing sales. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So you see where this is going, right? Yeah. And then March hits and it was all gone. Like I had oh. uh, big events all planned for April and it was surreal. Indeed, it was surreal. It was like, hey, you know, it's a good thing we had that big month there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everything was delayed. So that reminds me, Wayne, whenever there's a money thing that might normally kind of scare me, I say, good thing I'm rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, like, it, you know, I'm just blessed that, you know, I've, I've, I've had those um, experiences in my life knowing that going through that, I just knew that this was another one, just didn't even know. So one, I think the ability to have faith and trust that everything's going to work out and it's always working out for you. Um, you know, my wife and I, I'll be, you know, right up front is that we did a lot of Netflix and we did some wine drinking. Yeah. And <laughs> there was two things that I did. And this now, there was no grand plan to become this, this, this coach and entering the coaching space. Although I've done that. And, but most of my time was spent on stage doing a 90 minute presentation or performance. And so now I had all this time and I just knew that I needed to serve and I, you know, I'm blessed that I followed what I love to do. So I would go online like we are now on Facebook and I would do these hypnotic resets. I call them these subconscious resets where I go on and wake up with people. And I knew that a lot of people were struggling with stress and fear and the overwhelm and what they're going through right now. So I would help them relax their conscious and their critical mind so they can uh, program their subconscious just, you know, five, 10 minutes a day in the morning. And that led to people actually reaching out to me, asking if I could do individual sessions with them. And because I had the time, I would I'd start doing that. And it also gave me an outlet to take all the things that I learned over the years that I love so much that I only really had time to deliver in 90 minutes. And my passion was thinking about these things every day and studying all these, this personal development and hypnosis and NLP and being able to create my own proprietary process and methods. And so that led to uh, me coaching and, and doing some sessions with people. And then eventually um, I had one fellow that I used to work with 15 years ago, and he was a very successful businessman that called me up and said, Hey, Wayne, I, I noticed that you're online. Could you do some sessions with me? And I was like, well, I've got time. Yes, I can. So I ended up doing sessions with him. And by this time I was, I was looking at how could I pivot my stuff online? And I really didn't have a pull to do virtual events for corporate because I was doing hypnosis and it just, it just didn't seem right. Like for me doing all this interactive stuff and how do I translate that on, on virtual? So it was really me being able to teach people subconscious reprogramming and uh, do one-on-one -on -one sessions. And while I was doing sessions with this wonderful man that had called me out of the blue, I enjoyed it so much. I had this thought that I want to, be able to offer like maybe a yearly coaching package. And at this time, again, I'm working with a coach that's showing me how to pivot online, how to maybe create this to get out there. And uh, the fellow that I'm working with, I said, you know, I want to do a yearly coaching package and I want to be able to coach people and do this. And he says, well, what would you, what would be included in it? Well, I said, well, I'm working with you like every week and I'm doing a session with you every week. So I could see that this would be the format this would be the structure and he goes you know another thing Wayne is that I really like if, if you did a tune-up for me like kind of like midweek and that would help me and he, he basically helped me form the program nice 
but then he said this, he says, what would you charge for this? And I says, well, you know, I've hired coaches and business coaches for about 20, $25,000 for the year. I said, I've gotten tons of value. It helped me move myself forward and my business forward. And he looked at me and, he, and we were doing a zoom call just like this. And he says, Oh, that's, that's not enough. And no. Yeah. And so my mind went, okay, so what is enough? Like, what would you charge for something like that? And he got me to play a bigger game. He got me to think bigger of my own identity. I love this guy. Yeah, me too. And to this day, he's my number one coaching client because yeah. he said, um, no, it's not enough, Wayne. I said, well, what, you, what would you charge? He says, 100,000. I said, wow. I said, you know, I'm just, you know, first thought is like, what would I have to do to, to, to create the value for somebody for 100,000? Mm -hmm. And before I got into too much thought, he says, and sign me up for your first client. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And so it was, it was absolutely mind blowing in terms of the, um, how that all played out because it, it was not planned. It was not like this grand scheme of like, I'm you know going to do this, but I just stayed in this zone of, uh, managing my emotional state, doing things every day, like running to keep go. that state of what I talked to before about that, the, 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 the flow state, getting into that state where you, where, you know, if you stay in it, um, good things do happen. And it wasn't without planning or obviously all my experience that I've done throughout the years, but it really set the tone for me in regards to, okay, um, I, you know, now I'm at that level. What is, what do I have to do to get, you know, and, and to be that person and now deliver value. And so that's where, you know, hiring a coach and then, and then doing the 21 day subconscious reset challenge. And then the rest came really fast because my wife and I dialed into this is how we can get a lot of value out there to people. We can figure out what their pain points, what their problems are, what some of the things people are going through in the current problem and serve people. So kind of took over from there. I love that. So <clears throat> you have a hundred thousand dollar client. He's my, he's my 365 transform client, meaning he has access to me 365 days a year. <laughs> we check in on a, a daily basis because again, it's like his success is my success. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, so it got me to see myself differently. And that's the one thing that I know, like teaching others is no matter what people do, like they can have another strategy, they can try to change their behavior, but unless they see themselves differently at a subconscious level, which is their subconscious identity, then not much changes. They can actually move forward. And that's the one thing I've always done, Majid, as far as I remember, is I've always been able to see myself as if that you know, the person that has already achieved a certain result yeah. and that, you know, in some way, shape or form, it's hard to just, you know, link it up through logic, but how Dominic came into my life to then, you know, have that happen and have me see myself even at a different level. Yeah. What's your next big thing that you're seeing for yourself as already having? It is one, it's a financial goal of being able to hit a certain target in three years and also have, you know, a number of books out, uh, reaching millions of people and having, which we just actually launched last week, believe it or not, it's called the Transform Show. Like just doing it on a regular basis where we'll be able to reach a lot of people with um, the concepts, the tools and helping people wake up from the trance that are, that's keeping them from living their best life. I'm inspired as always, Wayne. Love your vision for what you're doing and I love seeing you do it. Okay, so we've talked about the magic of words. We've talked about getting into the business of uh, stage performance and what do we do when things change? We say what's next. The 21 day experience. Tell us about it. How do we get our hands on it? And I happen to know already it's only $47. So if you're listening to this, you get the $100,000 hypnotist, peak performance coach, trance form coach for only $47. Tell us about what the program is and how they get into it. Yeah. Well, again, for us, we had a, a coach that helped us. So thanks to her, she really showed us how she was getting value out there. We followed the model of 21 days to create a new habit, to change one thing, to reset. And what a lot of people were doing out there is that they were, they were struggling, they were grinding and and I'm more on the opposite side. I'm saying, stop the grind, get aligned. So it's really about people 
tapping into that state of who they, who they already are with being whole, complete and perfect. And it gave me a way to, because I'm not doing the events right now to do something over 21 days. And the cool thing is that it's only 10 minutes a day. So it's bite-sized information that teaches people. One proprietary thing is called the mental end game activation method and a whole bunch of other concepts about how the subconscious works, how people get their results. And by the end of it, you know, people that have gone through it like halfway through or right through the whole thing, they've either, you know, gotten to the point where their stress is completely at a different level. They're not living in stress and overwhelm. And it's not because they're putting on more stuff onto their plate. It's actually because they're uh, resetting their subconscious to being whole, complete and perfect because so many people are feeling like they're fixed, they, they're broken or they need to be fixed when the only thing that needs to be fixed is, is their focus and focus is either they're focusing upon what they don't want or they're not inspired. They're fearful. What does focus mean, Wayne? <laughs> <laughs> so I have uh, a few different acronyms for focus, but focus is the first one that ever came to me was fixed ongoing concentration, unlimited success. So whatever uh, people fix their concentration on is exactly what they get. The challenge is that, you know, it's either negative or positive. Gotcha. So here, here are the two other <laughs> focus words that are the magical meanings that I call them. So it's feeling ourself create unlimited success. In any moment, we're creating unlimited success or we're countering unlimited success. So feeling ourself counter unlimited success. And really, you know, the 21 day subconscious reset is getting people to fix their focus, giving them some transformational tools that can help them do that, but also taking the time to do some passive programming. And what passive programming is, is for people to get into a light trance or into a trance state where they get out of their own way from battling their beliefs and fighting themselves and getting aligned to who they are. So it gives people a taste of that in the 21 days. And again, a lot of people have gotten some great results from, you know, increasing their, their wealth to, you know, living with less stress and overwhelm, feeling more healthy, hitting their ideal, you know, weight ch uh, goals. Um, so we're just ecstatic about what people are getting from it and people can join up on a monthly basis. Awesome. Where do they go exactly? What link? So it's wainley.com forward slash 21 hyphen day hyphen challenge. All right. We'll make sure we get that uh, shared up here. And that would be, you know, if someone's listening to this in a few months, it would still be good. Yeah. Yeah. We're our mission now is to do that on a monthly basis and just keep refining it and getting better and better. We hear from the people that go through it, like what they're getting the most um, value from and how to tweak it. And we're building it as we go to make sure that it's getting the results that people want. Love it. I love that you're you're building it as you go and prototyping. It. And I just love how you, you know, you had such a successful business. You have such a successful business. And you know, how long, how long were you like in like paralyzed disbelief that like you're not going to be on stage anytime soon? And before you were able to be like, okay, let's build this, let's build yeah. this uh and impact millions. I think the <laughs> that's a good question, Majid. I think the first month, from what I remember, it was like. I didn't really know what was happening. It was like, yeah, I think things will come back. Who knows? And then I think it was like three months into it. It was just, it started to set in. It's like, okay, this is real. This is yeah. something we've got to deal with. And then it was just, it was just kind of this organic. Again, I think a couple of things that I did was I'm, I was always running outside to keep myself in a good state, uh, listening to music. And a lot of the stuff that I teach in the 21 day kind of just gelled at that time and just came out of me. And I started to write it down. I started to finish a book that I was writing. Um, so I actually thought it was going to be a book and a course that I was going to be putting out. And then lo and behold, it was, it was our challenge that became the leader. And because I think it, it became so consuming, it became such a, a, a wonderful focus that I didn't think about the events much. I kind of just like made a choice to move on. And that was, again, going back to making my future vision bigger than my past, not even knowing exactly what it is, but just knowing what do I love to do? I love to help people. I love to get them to change at a subconscious level. And I even had a greater opportunity to do that now. 
So, you know, I think three months I was focusing in on the opportunity mm -hmm. cool. and knowing this, that now moving forward, I look at getting on stages more about marketing to get people into changing more lives than just as another 90 minute presentation or entertainment piece. Yeah. And that's what happens once you have a product or a service to yeah. offer. You, you look out on the audience and you go, man, if they're liking this, they're going to love my 21 day program. And the beautiful thing is, is that from a business model, Majid, what is this has done? This has forced me into, not that I wasn't on that path before where I was like, I'm going to have products. I'm going to do this, but doing 75 to hundred vents a year, mm. like that's a lot of time traveling on stages, family. So now as it forced me into it, and um, I think Jim Rohn said this, he says, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. And when you force somebody into something and you're like, you got to sink or swim, you got to do or die, you, you, just, you either do it. And for me, that was it. And so now what I have in my business that I wasn't um, doing then is scalability. Like, I look at how I can get 100, I can get 200, I can get 500 people on the challenge and change lives, transform and keep the keep that transformation uh, going for the people that are on it. And so it's much deeper level. And it's one of the biggest things. And I, I realize that um, stage time is everything. You know, I've done thousands of shows and I got good because of the reps, because I was continually doing it. And it's yeah. the same thing with this. I've taken that attitude where what I'm doing with the challenge is that the more I do the challenge, the better it's going to get. So not to overthink things. That's another part of the subconscious where people stop, you know, they overthink things to death where they don't do it. They don't, you know, they're, they're in procrastination. And so for me, my new stage is right here. It's, it's getting better here. It's doing this. It's how can I deliver a message here? And, but it's still the same thing. I'm just communicating, I'm delivering it and moving forward to make it even better. And, and the scalability of how I can reach more people with technology now, as you know, it's uh, we, we're living in an a, a day and age that, you know, as we know, like going back 20 years ago, like the opportunities now are crazy to reach people. Never been a better time to get into the teaching business, the speaking business, the helping people out business. And as I say, the stage is now in our pocket. Yeah, we've got an yeah. international broadcast studio in our phone. So thank you for joining us on the Expert Speaker Podcast, Wayne. It's been a pleasure. You're an inspiration. Thank you for the work that you do. Hey, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for listening to the Expert Speaker Podcast. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and leave us a rating so that more people can discover the Expert Speaker Podcast and so more people can be empowered to share their message. Be sure to go to www.expertspeaker.com and take a masterclass to learn how to grow your business and make money speaking. It's totally free and will change your business. If you're ready to work with Expert Speaker, you can apply. Just go to expertspeaker.com slash apply and someone from our team will be in touch with you to help you grow your business with public speaking. That's expertspeaker.com slash apply. We'll see you in the next episode.